and we can see the PIM neighbor design drawn on the map. So the automation not only ran on this device, it took those neighbors from the neighbor table and extended them out, as you can see from the dotted arrows. Hi, and welcome back to the 5 Minute Automation video series. My name is George Logarakis. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about decoding network design. Now, this is one of the most critical yet time-consuming tasks for network engineers. Why is that? Well, it's because a lot of the processes around understanding network design are manual. This includes creating static documents like Visios or spreadsheets and logging into devices via CLI just to understand and look for critical configurations. Well, I'm happy to tell you that with NetBrain, we can make this process completely automated and done in just minutes. As a matter of fact, because of the name of this video series being five minutes and all, I'm gonna show you how to do this in five minutes or less. Let's jump right in. Now that we've discussed the topic of decode network design, let's start the challenge. So in today's challenge, I'm going to be building an automation that's going to be decoding multicast design, specifically the PIM neighbor table on my devices. And at the end of this, you'll be able to see a nice map showing all of those neighbor relationships. So without further ado, let's start the clock. So go ahead. I'm going to start a new intent. Uh, let's give it a nice name. Uh, extend. Call extend pim. And let me add a device as a seed device. This is going to be a device I know is going to have output. So CA tour uh, R1 and we will press OK. Now let's get the output of that command. And the command I'm using is going to be show IP pim neighbor. And we'll go ahead and we'll retrieve the live data, which is our pim neighbor table, which we can see here. I can go ahead and highlight this entire table and click the parse table button that appears to grab all of that information. Now, there's a few changes I have to make here uh, before going on to my logic. The first one is I need to remove a column, that being the uptime slash expires column, as I will be comparing this table to previous versions, and these timers may increase even a little bit and cause bad output and false positives. I also need to re remove this first row because it's uh, the overflow of the table headers is adding some information that's causing bad data. It's as simple as going to advanced settings, clicking the checkbox next to skip, and increasing this to skip one line from header. Now we have some nice clean data to work with. So I'll go ahead and click apply. There is one more operation we have to do to get this ready. We need to go to all intent variables, find our table, and add a formula column. Here's where we're gonna add a, a column to, to actually have the host name of the neighbor. This is gonna be needed for the uh, extension of the neighbors, which you'll see momentarily. So I'll call this uh, NBR name for neighbor name, and I'm gonna go ahead and define this. So it's, we're gonna use a function. NetBrain has many built-in functions. The one I'm gonna leverage is IP to host name. And here I put that function in, add a couple brackets, and within the brackets, I need to define the IP that's gonna be converted to the host name. In this case, neighbor IP. I press okay, I press okay again, and as you can see, we have a neighbor column that has the host names of all of the PIM neighbors. How quick was that? So let's go ahead and close this. Uh, we'll click apply again for good measure and we'll define a diagnosis. So we're actually gonna define two diagnoses. The first one is gonna be the neighbor table change. And this one is gonna be a very simple check. It's gonna be if the neighbor table currently does not equal the neighbor table from the last time we pulled it. And we wanna make sure that last time has some data to use. So we'll say is not empty. And then we'll have a red message in this case that says him neighbor neighbor t 
table has changed. Something simple. And we'll have an else so that if there is no change, green him neighbors are stable. And we'll add those as well. So now we're actually doing some validation. And next we're gonna actually do the decoding and mapping of the design. So that'll be another diagnosis. We'll call that extend. And here we're gonna loop table rows. And we're gonna select neighbor as our key because that's different each time. And we're just gonna say something simple. If neighbor is not empty, uh, then we're gonna remove our messages. We don't need them. We're gonna do a follow up intent. And we're going to follow up to the current intent. So do a self follow up. And now I'm going to put in some information. So this is where that neighbor name is going to come in handy. Device by variable, uh, neighbor name. We want to draw an arrow from this device to the next. And uh, also draw it through the interface that's in the PIM neighbor table, which will be at layer three. And that's it. So this is gonna follow up now to all the devices. So at this point, our automation is completely built. Phew, we beat the clock. And with just seconds to spare, that was such an exhilarating automation journey. And I'm glad you were here to see it. Now let's jump back in and see what we can do with this newly built automation. Let's go ahead and run this intent. So give me one second here. I'm gonna close out that window and let's click run. So now we're going to run our automation, we're going to run those self follow-ups, and we'll, we'll get a nice output. And you can see here those follow-ups running will increase the number of intents being executed. Now that it's complete, let's go ahead and click on the eyeball, and this is going to draw out our output on a map. And we'll go ahead and close both these windows, and we can see the PIM neighbor design drawn on the map. So the automation not only ran on this device, it took those neighbors from the neighbor table and extended them out, as you can see from the dotted arrows, and repeated this on the neighbor devices, devices as well, which is why you can see some devices such as this, this Japan switch that weren't in the neighbor table of CA Tor R1, because it was in the neighbor table of the Japan router. So now that we've ran this on the map, um, Another thing we can do is make it able to be run on any map, right? So even if one of these devices is on a map, we want to be able to come to the intent page here and run that automation. We can do that with the auto intent wizard. Now this differs from the intent based replication wizard, which we've shown before, because this wizard is only going to replicate it for use on maps rather than being able to use it as a continuous assessment. But because this is an automation that really draws out a design like you see here on the map. Uh, this wizard makes more sense. So let's go ahead and open that automation wizard. And I'm going to select that intent that I just built. So let's search for him. And here's our intent, extend him. And now you can see it's a three step wizard. So here I put the automation in and because I had just built it, I need to qualify the template. Uh, I'll do it by dynamic search, and I'm just going to say that if the device is a uh, Cisco router or switch is what I'm going to use. Uh, so device type matches any Cisco router or switch. And we can search here and see there's possibly 132 devices that this intent could be run on. Of course, that'll be qualified further uh, during the next step. So now we have this criteria, right? Another criteria that's also there by default is the critical variables. So when we go ahead to the next step and decode, not only are we going to look at the criteria we just defined, but NetBrain's also going to make sure we can pull the variables we need to run the automation. If the device does not run multicast or have PIM neighbors, well, that PIM neighbor table is going to be empty and therefore we can't run this automation. So those devices should be eliminated uh, during the decode process. So uh, we'll click install and decode and then we can click decode now. And we'll go ahead and let the decode process run. You can see here as I refresh, the status is updating 
And once this decode process is done, we can set it up to be run on uh, any map. And we can see here, now that that task is done, uh, there's 15 devices decoded for this intent. I mean, there's 15 devices in my network that are able to execute that intent. So let's make sure we can do that whenever they're on a map. We'll click next, and we'll enable this for auto intent. You have to select a folder. I'm gonna add a new folder. And we'll add this and we'll name this folder decode design. And we'll add our intent to that folder. Then we can also make this a member of intent profiles. Profiles are uh, separators so that when we have a profile open, we only see a certain subset of the auto intents we're able to run. So I'm gonna make this part of our decode network design profile and press OK. I'll go ahead and click finish. Uh, and we'll save the settings. And now if I go here and reset, and I go to the decode network design profile, I'm gonna see our extend PIM intent right here as an auto intent. And now on any map that contains the, those 15 devices that support this automation, I'll now have the option to decode the PIM neighbor design uh, right from this uh, pane here on the map. And I could click here, replicate it, and run the automation. We just took one of the most time consuming and repetitive tasks for network engineers and made it simple with NetBrain's no code network automation. Now, specifically to multicast, we could use the same methodology and actually draw out the multicast tree using the source and the group. If we wanted to expand this further, we could even decode things like our routing design, you know, for protocols such as BGP or OSPF and expand that analysis to, to check for things like, is a number of neighbors in the table changing? Or are the neighbor states changing? If you have any questions on this video or those other possibilities, feel free to comment below. And if you have any suggestions for the next topic, feel free to comment those as well. Thanks for watching and happy automating.